The Battle of Rafa, also known as the Action of Rafa, fought on 9 January 1917, was the third and final battle to complete the recapture of the Sinai Peninsula by British forces during the Sinai and Palestine campaign of the First World War. The desert column of the Egyptian expeditionary force attacked an entrenched Ottoman army garrison at El Magruntine to the south of Rafa, close to the frontier between the Sultanate of Egypt and the Ottoman Empire, to the north and east of Sheikh Zawaid. The attack marked the beginning of fighting in the Ottoman territory of Palestine. After the British Empire victories at the Battle of Romani in August 1916 and the Battle of Magdaba in December, the Ottoman army had been forced back to the southern edge of Palestine as the EF pushed eastwards, supported by extended lines of communication. This advance depended on the construction of a railway and water pipeline. With the railway reaching El Arish on 4 January 1917, an attack on Rafa by the newly formed Desert Column became possible. During the day-long assault, the Ottoman garrison defended El Magruntin's series of fortified redoubts and trenches on rising ground surrounded by flat grassland. They were eventually encircled by Australian light horsemen, New Zealand mounted riflemen, mounted yeomanry, cameleers and armoured cars. In the late afternoon, the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade captured the central redoubt and the remaining defences were occupied shortly afterwards. Chapter 1 – Background Following their victory at the Battle of Romani on 4 August 1916, the Anzac Mounted Division with the 5th Mounted Brigade attached and infantry in support, went on to the offensive. Their advance depended on the construction of a railway and water pipeline. With the railhead about 40 miles away, on 23 December 1916 the Anzac Mounted Division, less the 2nd Light Horse Brigade but with the Imperial Camel Corps Brigade attached, occupied El Arish during daylong fighting at the Battle of Magdaba. Meanwhile, the 52nd Division, having marched from Romani, established a garrison at El Arish and began to fortify the town on the Mediterranean Sea. 30 miles from the railhead. El Arish was 90 miles by road from the nearest British base at Kantara on the Suez Canal, initially making resupply difficult. The arrival of the Royal Navy on the 22nd of December, quickly followed by the first stores on the 24th of December, meant that during the next fortnight the important Egyptian expeditionary force forward base grew quickly as 1,500 tons of supplies arrived by ship. Supplies of all kinds were unloaded by the Egyptian Labour Corps and distributed by the Egyptian Camel Transport Corps. Vitally important, the supply activities at El Arish were protected by the infantry garrison, and ground-based artillery, supported by the Navy. On 4 January 1917, the first construction train arrived at El Arish, but it was some time before the railway, with its vast capacity to support the development of infrastructure, and the supply of large garrisons, was fully developed. General Sir Archibald Murray, the commander of the EF, was keen to complete the advance across the north of the Sinai, to put pressure on the southern Ottoman army. Believing an attack would compel Ottoman forces to abandon their desert bases and outposts on the Egyptian Sinai Peninsula, he ordered an advance from El Arish to Rafa, a distance of 27 miles, to begin as soon as possible. Chapter 2, Prelude On 28 December, Major General Harry Chevel, commander of the Anzac Mounted Division, ordered the 1st Light Horse Brigade to reconnoitre Bir El Burj, 12 miles along the road from El Arish towards Rafa. The road was found to be suitable for cars and artillery, and a further reconnaissance by the same brigade, two days later to Sheikh Zawaid, 20 miles from El Arish, reported rolling stretches of pasture, crops and poppies. A small advance guard moved, ten miles further, to within sight of the main Ottoman defences at El Magruntin, reporting great activity in the area. The weather cleared on 5 January, allowing a patrol from No. 1 Squadron, Australian Flying Corps, to observe 2,000 to 3,000 Ottoman soldiers digging defences south of Rafa in the area of El Magruntin. Two days later, British air patrols found Ottoman garrisons in strength at El Kosema, and Hafa El Auja in central northern Sinai, which could threaten the right flank of the advancing EFA or reinforce Rafa. 
While the British air patrols were absent on 7 January, German airmen took advantage of the growing concentration of EF formations and supply dumps, bombing El Arish during the morning and evening. The next day the patrols from No. 1 Squadron AFC were in the air all day, covering preparations for the attack on Rafa. Lieutenant General Philip Chetwode, commanding the Desert Column, rode out of El Arish at 1600 hours on 8 January towards Rafa where a 2,000-strong Ottoman garrison was based. Chetwode's mounted force was the same as that Chevel had commanded during the Battle of Magdaba in December, with the addition of the 5th Mounted Brigade and the 7th Light Car Patrol consisting of four gun cars and three stores cars. Risking an aerial attack during daylight hours, the force began the 30-mile journey before sunset to ensure there was enough time for the force to reach El Magrantin. For the first few miles they trekked over heavy sand dunes, which were difficult to negotiate for the double teams of horses pulling the guns and ammunition wagons. Once the great shallow trough, worn down by traffic since ancient times, along the old road or pilgrim's way appeared, the guns and ammunition wagons travelled on the firm middle way while the mounted units rode on either side. The vanguard of the column reached Sheikh Zawaid at about 2200 hours, the desert column bivouacked near the crossroads to the west of the village. Here the first grass the horses had seen since leaving Australia was found on the edge of the fertile maritime plain, 16 miles north of El Arish. The plan for the attack at Rafa the next morning, the 9th of January, was a repetition of Chevelle's successful encirclement attack at Magdaba. The regiments and motor cars would surround the Ottoman garrison position, gallop up under fire, then dismount to attack the defenders in their treble system of trenches and fieldworks around the earthwork redoubts on the knoll. Chapter 2 Section 1 Attack Force The mounted units of the Desert Column involved in the attack under Chetwode's command were Anzac Mounted Division, commanded by Chevelle, composed of the 1st and 3rd Light Horse Brigades, the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, and the Inverness Shire, Leicestershire and Somerset Royal Horse Artillery Territorial Batteries. 1st, 2nd and 3rd Battalions Imperial Camel Corps Brigade with the Hong Kong and Singapore Mountain Battery. 5th Mounted Brigade with Big Battery, Honorable Artillery Company. 7th Light Car Patrol consisting of 6 Ford Light Armored Motorcars equipped with machine guns. No. 1 Squadron AFC, which had been based at Mustabig during the El Arish and Magdaba operations, moved forward 5 miles west of El Arish to support the attack. Chapter 2 Section 2, Ottoman Defenders Rafa was defended by the Ottoman 31st Infantry Regiment, supported by one mountain gun battery. British aerial reconnaissance had reported this force was between 2,000 to 3,000 strong. They were well entrenched in four main positions on the high ground about Hill 255, known as El Magrantin. Their central redoubt, rising about 200 feet to dominate the surrounding grassland, was supported by three systems of redoubts which the British called A, B and C. These redoubts were linked and supported by trenches on the slopes spreading out to the southeast, south and southwest. These strong, well-prepared and sighted redoubts and trenches provided all-round defense, with a clear view of the battlefield devoid of cover for some 2,000 yards. The only weakness was to the rear of the position, in the northeast. Chapter 3, Rattle The Desert Column began the final approach to attack Rafa on 9 January 1917 without any reserve ammunition for the artillery, rifles or machine guns. The column's commander, Chetwode, had ordered all wheeled vehicles, excepting the guns, to remain at Sheikh Zawaid. His brigadiers complied with the order, but only under protest. It had been the intention of Desert Column headquarters that the reserve ammunition would be sent onward after daylight, but during the battle the system broke down and this did not occur, resulting in a critical failure of the ammunition supply. In many cases, supplies were rushed forward, but failed to reach the units requiring them on the firing line. At one o'clock the first light horse, and the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigades led the Desert Column. Half a mile from Sheikh Zawaid, they encountered a hostile Bedouin camel patrol which was captured. 
At 6.15 the Auckland Mounted Rifle Regiment was first to reach the boundary pillars, crossing the Egyptian Ottoman frontier. These two brigades rode to a position from which to attack the Rafa defences, from the south, east and north. They were followed at 2.30 by the remainder of the Anzac Mounted Division, part of the 5th Mounted Brigade, the Imperial Camel Brigade, and six Ford motor cars of the 7th Light Car Patrol. Two troops of the Queen's own Worcestershire Hussars remained at Sheikh Zawaid to protect the ammunition column, while a squadron followed the caravan road towards Rafa. By 6.45 the Anzac Mounted Division headquarters was established 4.5 miles west of Qam ibn Muslay on the frontier to the south of Rafa and El Magruntin. The 1st and 3rd Light Horse Brigades and the artillery took up positions to the south to guard against the Ottoman garrison retreating to the southeast, with the Imperial Camel Corps Brigade located three quarters of a mile to the west. The New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade was about one mile to the north with the 5th Mounted Brigade forming the Desert Columns Reserve. By 7 o'clock a patrol of the Wellington Mounted Rifles had cut the telegraph line running east from Rafa towards Shalal and Gaza, isolating the Rafa garrison, Chevel had reconnoitred the El Magruntin defences and the British Empire horse artillery batteries had begun firing on the redoubts at El Magruntin dock just after 8 o'clock the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade circled northwards, moving into position for their attacks on the C4 and C5 groups of redoubts and trenches, while the 1st Light Horse Brigade moved into position to attack the C3, C2 and C1 groups. After these objectives were captured, the two brigades were to attack the central redoubt. Meanwhile, three battalions of the Imperial Camel Brigade were ordered to attack the D group of fortifications. The 3rd Light Horse Brigade formed the Anzac Mounted Division's reserve. In preparation for the attack, the divisional artillery had pre-selected targets and at 9.30 the Leicestershire, Inverness Shire and Somerset batteries of the Royal Horse Artillery and B Battery, Honorable Artillery Company began a 30-minute preparatory barrage. Under cover of this, the attacking troops began their advance, and by 9.45 they had approached to within 2,000 yards of the Ottoman entrenchments. Chapter 3 Section 1 – Attack Begins As the 1st Light Horse Brigade advanced from the direction of El Gubba, westward towards El Magruntin and the C Group of Redoubts, they encountered heavy machine gun and shrapnel fire from German and Ottoman guns. To the south, the Imperial Camel Brigade advanced towards the before redoubt, and at 10.30 the 5th Mounted Brigade was ordered to demonstrate against the works further west. When they arrived at a plateau 2,500 yards from El Magruntin, the Warwickshire Yeomanry on the right was ordered to attack the B1 and B2 redoubts, while the Royal Gloucestershire Hussars were sent to the left along the edge of the sand dunes to attack the right of the A1 readout, the most westerly of the defences. The troops dismounted to begin their attack 2,000 yards from their objectives, but were immediately engaged by heavy machine gun fire and shrapnel from two guns. By 10 o'clock, the attack from the north, led by the Auckland Mounted Rifles and supported by two machine guns, with the Canterbury Mounted Rifles Regiment on their right had ridden into Rafa as they circled around El Magruntin. Here, they quickly captured the village along with six German and, and two Ottoman officers, sixteen other ranks and twenty-one Bedouins. Two troops were sent to watch for the approach of Ottoman reinforcements, one troop to the north towards Khan Yunis and one to the east towards Shalal. With the Ottoman garrison defending El Magruntin cut off from the north and east by the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, Orders were issued for all Desert Column reserves to be committed, and the attack pressed home. By 11 o'clock the attacking force was deployed from right to left, the Canterbury and Auckland Mounted Rifles Regiments, two squadrons of the 1st Light Horse Regiment, one squadron of the 2nd Light Horse Regiment, the 3rd Light Horse Regiment, the 10th Light Horse Regiment, the 1st Battalion Imperial Camel Corps Brigade and the Warwick and Gloucester Yeomanry. They were supported by the Inverness Shire Battery covering the New Zealanders, the Leicestershire and Somerset Batteries covering the Australians and the Hong Kong Battery covering the Camel Corps Battalion, while the Hack Battery shelled the C Group of Redoubts from a distance of three quarters of a mile. Brigadier General Edward Chater, commanding the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, 
moved his headquarters up to the boundary post one mile southeast of Rafa, immediately behind the Auckland Mounted Rifles. Half an hour later, the attack was seen to be steadily progressing all along the line. By 12.15 the Wellington Mounted Rifles Regiment had come up to the front line, between the Canterbury's on the right, and the Aucklanders on the left, within 600 yards of El Magruntine, while the 2nd Battalion of the Camel Brigade advanced to extend the line held by their 1st Battalion. Shortly afterwards, the Canterbury Mounted Rifles Regiment linked up with the left of the 5th Mounted Brigade, completing the cordon around the Ottoman army entrenchments. To the left of the 5th Mounted Brigade, the 7th Light Car Patrol reached the Rafa Road, where they found cover from which to direct fire onto the A1 and A2 redoubts 1,600 yards away. Meanwhile, the batteries had pushed forward about 1,500 yards from their previous positions and B battery hack stopped firing on the C group of redoubts. Switching targets to the A1 and A2 redoubts, it recommenced firing at a range of 1,600 yards in support of the 5th Mounted Brigade. Chapter 3 Section 2 – Ammunition Shortages Despite the initial assault, the Ottoman defenders continued to hold very strong defensive positions, with each readout ideally placed to provide supporting fire for others. In most places the dismounted attackers were badly exposed to this fire. A constant stream of fire was maintained on the Ottoman parapets to suppress the defenders and prevent them from taking aim while the attack continued. Little by little the cordon drew tighter under intense fire over the bare, gently sloping grasslands. However, between about 12.15 and 14.15 progress slowed. By early to mid-afternoon supplies of ammunition began to run low. Although Chevelle called for further effort, the mistake of leaving the ammunition vehicles behind proved costly, as the attack wavered. The New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade ran out of ammunition for four of its machine guns, and the Inverness Shire Battery ran out of shells and had to withdraw. At 1430, Chevelle ordered a fresh effort against the C Group of Redoubts to begin at 1530, while a sustained artillery barrage was to continue on these redoubts until then. However, 15 minutes later, an Ottoman machine gun officer and three German soldiers, captured by the troop of the Wellington Mounted Rifles Regiment keeping watch towards Shalal, stated that their 160th Regiment had left Shalal on the Wadi Guza when the attack had begun, to reinforce the Rafa garrison. Shalal was between 10 and 13 miles or about three and a half hours away. This was confirmed when two battalions were seen in advancing in artillery formation, over the ridges west of Shalal towards Rafa. An additional 500 soldiers were seen approaching Rafa from the direction of Khan Yunus by the same Mounted Rifle Regiment's Northern Guard. Chapter 3 Section 3 Final Assaults The general assault, launched at 1530, was supported by all available guns. It made slow progress against the stubborn Ottoman defenders, who were supported by bombing from German planes, while the advance guard of Ottoman reinforcements, from Khan Yunus in the north and Shalal in the east, were attacking the two troops of the Wellington Mounted Rifles Regiment. Four guns of the Canterbury Mounted Rifles Regiment, on the right flank, were moved to a trench before being moved forward to the sunken road. From there they maintained effective overhead covering fire, until the assaulting troops were within a few yards of the trenches. These guns were also well positioned to provide cover if pressure by the Ottoman reinforcements from Khan Yunus and Shalal proved too strong for the two troops of Wellington's, or if the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade was forced to retire to the coast. After steady, methodical, and persistent work, by 1600 hours a cloud of smoke hung over the central redoubt from rifle and machine gun fire. The covering fire was so effective that the Ottoman defenders had extreme difficulty aiming and firing their rifles and machine guns. It then became possible for the attacking forces to cover the last 600 to 800 yards of smooth grassy slope in two rushes. At about 1630, the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade launched its final assault on the central redoubt from the northwest, the north and the northeast. Lacking artillery support, they made determined use of machine guns on the firing line, crossing fire to get better targets, 
and cooperating with the machine guns of the 1st Light Horse Brigade to cover the advance to within 400 yards of the main Ottoman position. They captured the central redoubt in a final bayonet charge, at the run, many of the soldiers firing as they went. From their captured position in the dominating central redoubt, they were able to enfilade other redoubts still held by Ottoman defenders. With the New Zealanders holding the dominant redoubt, the 1st and the 3rd Light Horse Brigades were able to advance and capture the remaining redoubts on their fronts. As the 3rd Battalion of the Imperial Camel Brigade approached the B Group of trenches, a white flag appeared, and the B2 and the central work of B Group were occupied by 1650. They captured five officers and 214 other ranks while the Warwickshire Yeomanry captured the B1 redoubt and another 101 prisoners. These successful attacks were supported by aircraft, which bombed the redoubts and trenches. The aircraft had recently been fitted with wirelesses, and during the afternoon reported the progress of the battle to the Desert Column's headquarters, assisting in command and control. The New Zealanders remained close to the main redoubt system while prisoners were collected and sent to Sheikh Zawaid and the four captured guns taken away. Chetwode reported to the commander of Eastern Force, Lieutenant General Charles McPherson Dobell, that the work of all troops engaged had been excellent, and the part played by the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade had been outstanding. Chapter 3 Section 4 Casualties during the fighting the Desert Column suffered three times the losses previously endured at Magdaba. The 487 casualties included 124 New Zealanders, 71 killed, 415 wounded and one missing. Against this, the mainly Ottoman prisoners, which included some German machine gunners, totaled between 1,472 and 1,635, with 162 of them wounded. About 200 Ottoman soldiers were killed on the battlefield. Chapter 4 Aftermath Following the battle, a strong rearguard position manned by two light horse regiments, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Leslie Cecil Magar, was established. Meanwhile, the bulk of the desert column returned to Sheikh Zawaid for water and rations, arriving about midnight. The two light horse regiments that had remained at Rafa stood guard, while the battlefield was cleared by the light horse field ambulances, whose stretcher bearers worked into the night. The third light horse field ambulance, covered by the 8th light horse regiment, remained on the battlefield, as all available ambulance carts and empty wagons were sent up from Sheikh Zawaid to help transport the wounded to hospital. The Anzac Mounted Division's field ambulance units had been reorganized before the battle, and were equipped with 10 pairs of litters, 15 pairs of cacolets, 12 sand carts, 12 cycle stretchers, and 6 sledges. With this, they were able to transport 92 patients at a time, and they set about the task of evacuating the wounded. The following morning, the 8th Light Horse Regiment was attacked by Ottoman cavalry and camel units. After a period of fighting, the attackers were forced to withdraw, leaving 14 prisoners behind. The whole of the 3rd Light Horse Brigade returned to the battlefield on 10 January with the 7th Light Car Patrol and wagons to collect captured material. Chapter 4 Section 1 El Arish Bombed during the night of the 19th of January, with the benefit of a full moon, German and Ottoman aircraft carried out the biggest aerial bombing raid yet, inflicted on the EF's fast-growing and important forward base of El Arish. As well as dropping bombs, these aircraft, probably the powerful new Albatross D3, swooped down firing their machine guns into the camp. Casualties, particularly in the horse lines which were an obvious target from the air, were considerable. Chapter 4 Section 2 – Murray's Plans The campaign across the Sinai Desert, which had begun in August, ended with the expulsion of the Ottoman Empire from Egyptian territory. With the British victory at Rafa, the steady progress of the railway and water pipeline, and the build-up of supplies at El Arish, the EF was able to build a firm base from which it planned to advance into Ottoman territory. To do so, 
They needed to capture Gaza first and subsequently the first battle of Gaza took place in March 1917. On the 19th of January, British aerial reconnaissance found the Ottoman army had evacuated El Kosema and reduced the strength of their main desert base at Hafa El Auja. However, GHQ believed the Ottoman garrisons would continue to hold on to the Nekal area in the center of the Sinai Peninsula, including the villages of Bir El Hassana, Gibel Helal, Gibel Yelig and Gibel El Haitan, to maintain control over the Arab population. To address the problem of Ottoman army units in the rear of the advancing EF, a raid was carried out by two columns of light horse and yeomanry at Nekal. The two columns moved out from Serapium, near Ismaili on the Suez Canal, with three aircraft in support to carry out the attack, 60 miles to the east. However, as the columns were approaching the area on 17 February, the reconnaissance aircraft found the Ottoman garrisons had retired, and no fighting occurred.